Hello, Algebra. Now we are learning about graphing exponentials. All right, graphing exponentials. So we know that exponentials are of the form y equals ab to the x. Um, I want you to know that this crosses the y-axis at a. So I'll use my colors here for my a and my b. I don't know why, but I always do blue and green. Helps my brain, I guess. So for... Um, the first graph here, I want us to, to kind of ignore this side for now. We're just going to focus on this one. So if b is greater than 1, right, if b is greater than 1, then, uh, and let's just say it is, the a is positive. That's what this guy means right here, okay? a is positive. So that would be this upper graph. And you can see it touches the y-axis at a right here, the point zero a, um, and it's kind of this funky L shape, all right? That is an exp our exponential graph. Um, and so then I'm going to bring it back around to domain and range. We haven't talked about that for a month or two now. So let's think about the domain and the range. The domain is what x values can it touch. Well, if we look at the ends, our arrows here, um, our arrows go in either direction, right? They keep going. It's more like this, I guess. That means it can touch any X number. So all real X numbers. So X can be anything. Another way we write that is with this kind of funky R. This just stands for all real numbers. So you can write all real numbers. Remember, mathematicians are efficient. So this little R here, the double lined R, that is a way of just saying it's all real numbers. And I kind of think of it's like the, the double L here from the all, or the all uh, mixed with this R from the real. You know what I mean? Because they did like a, a double line for the all and then an R. So all real numbers. Um, that's going to be the domain for our lower graph here as well. So both these got graphed on the same graph, which I'm not thrilled about, but it's a nice way to kind of summarize what we notice, what we see, when we have um, a value for b that is greater than 1, all right? Well, what's the y value? If I ignore my bottom one here, we can see that y never goes below 0. In fact, it never touches 0. Um, our y-axis is what we call an asymptote. Asymptotes are things where functions get really close to it, but they never actually touch it, all right? They never actually touch it. So it would be like I could get halfway to the screen, right? I could get halfway... And I could get halfway again, and I would forever be taking little tiny baby steps, but I would never actually reach the screen because I'm always getting halfway there. I'll let that sink in for a second because it's weird. So in this case, our y is going to be greater than zero. Okay, our y is going to be greater than zero. It never actually touches the x-axis. Our x-axis is an asymptote. For this lower function down here, um, a is actually a negative number, and so we can see that the bigger uh, our x gets, the more negative it gets, right? The more negative it gets, or the more in debt something becomes. Um, so in this case, this would be where y, it's actually less than 0, right? Because this is our 0, and it always is less than, so y is always less than 0. Again, zero is that asymptote. The graph will never touch the x-axis. It will never touch it. It will never cross it. So now let's look at this one over here. All right, we've talked about when b is greater than zero. Now we're going to look at when b is a fraction or a decimal. Okay, so it's less than one but greater than zero. You'll notice none of this has to do with negative b's, okay? Exponential functions, we're not going to deal with that. When you get to algebra 2, you'll have some fun with it. But we're going to look at positive b values. So when b is a fraction or a decimal, um, if, it is, if a is positive, then we get this one right here. So this is what we are trying to get to happen with our pandemic. All right, We are trying to get our numbers to go down. Right, That's what we're trying to do. So our domain is still all real numbers right, for all of these, all real numbers. But our range in this case is going to be y is greater than 0. So even though our function is decreasing, it's still above the zero, right? It never gets to that zero. Also, why diseases never actually totally go away. 
you could make an argument with me on that one, but let's just leave that there for now because this isn't biology, this is math. So for our other one, for this guy right here, this is when it is less than, A is less than uh, zero. So it's a negative, this one was a positive. So when A is negative, um, we actually are getting bigger. Um, and you might look at me and go, well, why is that? Why are we getting bigger each time? It's because this is actually a fraction, right? B is a fraction. So instead of going, you're going from like negative one half to negative one fourth to negative one eighth to negative one sixteenth to negative one. So you see how that fraction overall is decreasing, right? Negative one half, negative one fourth, negative one eighth, negative one sixteenth. So um, you are actually increasing. I hope that makes sense. We'll see that in a second. So for this one, y is always going to be less than zero. All right. Our asymptote is that x equals zero. It will never cross that. So y is less than zero. So let's look at some functions. And I think I'm going to do all at least two of these with you. Maybe all four. We'll see. Um, our first one here, we've got y equals. Oh, how do I keep doing that? There we go. Move that out of my way. So our first one right here, we've got 4 um, to the 2, 2 to the x. Uh, we already know that our domain is all real numbers. I don't even have to look at what this graph is to know it's going to be all real numbers. And I've kind of given you a hint as to what the range is, because you'll notice we only have the uh, first and second quadrants here. We don't have the third or fourth. Now, one easy way, I think, to graph is to use a table. All right, it's to use a table. I find it easier to do it that way because I can plug in my numbers, see what comes out, and then I just write them in the table, then I graph them all. So for this one, we've got y equals 4, 2. I'm going to start with a negative 2. All right. Well, I know that that negative means my 2 moves to the denominator. So this is really y equals 4 over 2 squared. Wait a second. 2 squared is 4. So this is 4 over 4, and I know that that is 1. I know that that's 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. Or 4 to the 0, if you really want to do it that way. So then what about um, if I had a negative 1? So that would be y equals 4, 2 to negative 1. So that would be 4 over 2 to the 1. Hey, 4 divided by 2, that is 2. Another way you can do this is because you know that you are multiplying by 2 each time, you could just say, hey, I go from 1 to 2 um, to 4 because I'm timesing by 2 each time. Uh, the other thing, too, is because this is your A value, you automatically know what 0 is. 0 has to be 4 because that is your A value. All right. And then 2 is your rate which is why you have the times 2. So I could times by 2, and then times by 2, and then times by 2 each time. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 by times 2 is 32. Now you'll notice my scale. I'm going to get rid of this post-it here. My scale does not include room for the 32. So this one's not going to be on the graph. But that doesn't mean it's not helpful. Right? We could be asked a question about something on day three that happens or something like that. Pandemic started. You never know. So we can see with this one that all of our values are going to be greater than zero. So y, our range, is greater than zero. And now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to graph these. So at negative two, which is right here, right? That's negative two. I'm going to plug in a one. So this is two. There we go. So at negative 2, it's 1. At negative 1, which is right here, it's 2. At 0, it's 4. At 1, which is right there, it's 8. And then at 2, it's 16. All right? So that is our graph. So here's how I'm going to draw it. I'm going to start off very, very small here. And there is our exponential graph. 
there is our exponential graph. I'm going to leave this one for you guys to do. All right. Um, I want to show you an exponential when we're done with today, actually, with our pandemic. It's interesting. It's sad, too. Don't get me wrong. It's sad. But it's real-life math, which doesn't always happen, as some of you have told me. So I'm going to scoot this up. We're going to take a look at this one now. So again, we already know our domain. I can write it down. All real numbers. Exponentials have domains that are all real numbers. Um, and now I want to take a look at our uh, range. At our range. Uh, you'll notice with this one, too, I did not give you the scale down here. So I'm letting you make your own scale in this case, which can be very handy. So with this one, we've got y equals 2 to the 1 half. I'm going to start with a negative 2. So y equals 2. I need to distribute that negative 2, so I get 1 to negative 2 over 2 to negative 2. Now, 1 to negative 2, and 1 to anything is always 1, no matter what. doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. It's always going to be 1. So that means this 2 and the 1 are going to swap places. So I get 2 squared over 1 squared. Hey, look at that. It's still 1. So now I've got 2 times 2 times 2 over 1 squared. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 over 1. So that's really just 8. Now, I want to make sure I tell you, because this is your A value, that means you know what 0 is. It's going to be 2. All right? Your 0 is going to be a 2. And because this is your rate, I can multiply by 1 half each time. So this is where uh, last time I had said, hey, multiply by a half, or you could also divide by 2, right? It's, you're doing the same thing. So you're timesing by 1 half or dividing by 2. Well, 8 times 1 half is 4. 4 times a half is 2. 2 times a half is 1. 1 times a half is 1 half. And then 1 half times 1 half. Ooh, multiplying fractions. So fun. 1 half times 1 half, you multiply straight across. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Hey, it's like we did all that fraction review at the beginning of the year for like a reason. Doesn't that feel good to use your skills? All right, so we've got our values right here, um, and we can see that I'm going all the way from 8 down to a 1 fourth. So I'm going to start up here at 8, um, and then this would be 6, this would be 4, that would be 2, wait, 8, 6, 4. I think I'm going to do it every other. Yeah. So 8, 6, 4, and 2. There we go. That makes more sense. And then uh, I'm going to go with 2 and a 4, and then a negative 2 and a negative 4. So that means that negative 2, we had 8, so that's my first point. Um, oh, and I know that y is always greater than 0. So even though I'm decreasing, I'm never going to cross this, right? We can see how all of these are positives. So y is greater than 0. Uh, at negative 1, it's 4. So it goes there. At 0, it's 2. At 1, it's 1. At 2, it's 1 half. And then at 3, it's 1 4. So it's going to be like there. But remember, it never crosses the x-axis. So make sure when you draw it, leave your function so that it is slightly above that line. Right? Slightly above. All right, there is are two more graphs right here that you should try for yourself. Mark their domain and range. We're going to look at some real-life examples. And I did not do a pandemic. I did a bacterial growth. All right. So bacterial growth. Uh, let me see if I can zoom out. There we go. That's slightly better. So we're going to look up here. Um, we have a graph of an exponential function. Uh, remember, you can use uh, f of x notation, right? That's the same thing as y. It's just function notation. It puts the fun in function. Um, and we have uh, a graph right here, which is 4, 2 to the x. 
So we want the graph of the exponential function g that models the relationship where the dependent variable is multiplied by 1.5 every one unit and the independent variable increases. So when g, graph g, when g of x equals 4, I'm sorry, g of 0 equals 4. So this actually gave us a point. That point is 0, 4. Not only that, but because it's a 0, they told us our a value. So our a is 4. And right here, they told us our rate. It's being multiplied by 1.5. So that's our b. So we actually know our equation right now. It's going to be g of x equals 4, 1.5 to the x. Because this 1.5 is our rate, and this 4 is our a. So I'm going to put a 4 here because it's my a value. Ooh, a. There we go. Um, and then I'm multiplying by 1.5 each time. Well, 4 times 1.5 is 6. Um, 6 times 1.5 is 9. 9 times 1.5 is 13.5. Um, and then this way, I would actually be dividing. All right, I'd be dividing. Um, so I think this way it's... before divided by 1.5. Oh, my brain can't do that this morning. Did I write it down? Yes, I did. 2.67. Oh, that drives me nuts. That's not accurate. Okay. Because I'd be dividing by 1.5, which is really 3 over 2. So that would be 8 over 3. All right, that'd be 8 over 3. So that is our function right there. And we know g of 0 is the point 0, 4. All right, I'm going to scroll up, so to speak, as I slide. We've got a uh, bacterial colony, A, that uh, the graph below represents a population uh, Y after X days. So we want to write a function for the colony of bacterial uh, colony A to determine the population after 12 hours and after 5 days. Well, first of all, we need to figure out what our A and our B are. So if we look at our graph, A is wherever it's the X or Y axis, excuse me, the Y axis. So that would be right here. So that means our a is 3, right? Because our x is 0. So then what's our rate? We're going from 3 to 12, from 12 to 48, from 48 to 192. What am I doing each time? I think it's easiest to look from the 3 to 12 and ask ourselves, what are we multiplying by? Well, in that case, we are multiplying by 4. So that means my function should be y equals 3 times 4 to the x. Uh, ha, ha, 3, 4. Um, and this is because we are going from 3 to 12. So I'm multiplying by 4. Um, and this is because we are at the point 0, 3. So now that I know my function, I can look at 12 hours and at 5 days. Now 12 hours... We have to be careful with that one. I can't just plug in 12 here. Okay, well, you could, but you'd be looking at 12 days, right? X represents days. So I need to think about 12 hours. And how many days is that? Well, there are 24 hours in a day. So that'd be 12 hours out of 24 hours. So that would be one half, right? So 12 hours is really one half of a day. So that means I want to plug in... Hey, look at that! One half! A fraction! We know what that means. That means we really have the square root of 4. Well, wait a second. The square root of 4 is really just 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So, at 12 hours, there are 6 bacteria. 
that's what that means. At 12 hours, there are six bacteria. Well, what about after five days? So let's do that one. So we've got y equals three, four to the fifth. Um, your table will be really handy for this one because I gave you that, that table of all the different values. Um, it goes all the way through four, so you can just plug in another one. Or if you're like me and you already wrote it down, um, then you know that four to the fifth is 1,024. You multiply that by three and you get 3,072. So after five days, there are 3,072 bacteria. All right, 3,072 bacteria. All right, I'm gonna scroll this again. We've got a population of bacteria for colony B and it starts with 100 bacteria. Wait a second, starts? If it says starts, then I know something about A. It's gonna be 100, all right? Because A is always wherever it starts. Um, and then it has 200 bacteria on day two. Uh, I think that was supposed to be a one. Sorry there, guys. I think that's supposed to be a one. Yeah. So on day one, it's got 200 bacteria. Well, how did I get from 100 to 200? What did I do? I had two times by two. So that means my B here is going to be times by two. So I can write my equation. We have Y equals 100 times parentheses two to the X where X is our days. So we want to determine the population after six days. After six days. So we want Y equals 100, two to the six, All right? Cause this is our, There we go. Didn't color code that very well. So I'll show you guys the top again with my X color coding now. So in six for the two down here, we end up with 100 times uh, two to the six. Well, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64. So 64 times 100 is 6,400. So six days, 6,400 bacteria. So then the question is, which colony grows faster? Explain. Well, we need to look at our two equations, these ones right here. All right, which colony grows faster? Explain. Our blue numbers are starting values, right? This one's starting with three, this one's starting with 100. That's not its growth. The growth is the green. So which one grows faster and how do you know? Well, colony A grows faster. How do I know? Because it grows by four. This one's only growing by two each time. So colony A grows faster because its rate is four, which is greater than two. A little bit of a dust statement there, I know, but it's still important to say. My toddler can understand that. Two is greater than, or four is greater than two. All right, email me if you have questions. Um, and the skills practice is posted.